Welcome to another segment of um, 30 Minutes with Jesus. I hope you had a wonderful week. I did. And um, today, I just want us to appreciate the Lord for making it possible for us to see another day, given the way the world has been. So, Father, we just appreciate you for this beautiful moment an opportunity and privilege to be among the living father it is by your grace that we are alive today therefore father even as we are in your presence about to to listen to your word i ask that the holy spirit will speak through me that it will bless your people today in jesus name amen so folks, today we're going to look at holiness. That was what the Holy Spirit put in my heart last night when I was asking God what he wants me to share with his people today. So we're right we're going to get into it right now right away. So according to the layman's meaning regarding holy, holiness. It says that holiness is a life. It's a, it's a life of holiness and total devotion to God. Some meaning suggests that is that holiness is sanctity, godliness, stainlessness, perfection. So, what does the Bible says? What does the Bible say regarding? Holiness. What does the, we have to look at? What the scriptures is telling us regarding holiness. We're going to open our Bible to the book of Romans, chapter twelve, verse one. If you're there, that means you're fast. So, yeah, I read. I beseech you, therefore, brethren by the mercies of God that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice holy acceptable unto God which is your reasonable service praise the Lord I'm going to stop there you see we need to know that devotion is absolutely different from being holy why because a person can be devoted and at the same time not holy. That is to say, you could be religiously practicing what the Bible teaches, yet you don't have a one-on-one -on -one relationship with the maker, with the creator. And you know, you like for example you, you could see in churches today there are deacons there are ushers i'm not saying all of them are not holy no what i'm saying is that you could hold that post and be devoted whatever program is going on in church you are there you're first to be there things like that still you don't even have a one-on-one -on -one relationship with god that matters a lot so yeah, that is that. According to the Bible, the Bible tells us that God sees the heart and not what you try to do in order for people to see that you are religiously devoted. So holiness is about separating yourself from the things of this world. Let us read verse 2 in the same chapter. Verse 2 says, And be not confirmed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Praise the Lord. The Bible is so rich. So, this is to tell you that, which means the company you keep matters. The type of things you view, 
what kind of movies do you sit and watch? Well, how do you dress? You know? Do you dress like those women that hang out on the street? So these things matter. As Paul the Apostle wrote in the book of Romans when he was addressing to the Romans, that when he, sorry, when he, 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 he wrote the book of Romans, he, he urged us to, 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 he kind of, this is an advice from him in order to be holy and to be, perfect in the presence and be for God to accept you you have to start by renewing yourself you renewing your mind and what you view usually you will keep meditating upon it and probably you might decide to act on it so we need to control what we see and we need to control what we hear because gossip is everywhere Probably it's not true, probably it's true, but we should be careful what we take in because we will keep chewing upon it and then next thing probably we might react on it. So, you see, because when you sit around people who do not share the same beliefs with you, all you get is division, offense. In Romans 16, 17, tells us to avoid such company. I'm going to read it for us. Romans 16, 7. Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause division and offenses, contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned, and avoid them. What is he saying? The company you keep matters. If you are in a company that they are not... Believers in Christ, what are you doing there? Because there's nothing that you will tell them that will make sense. So what will you be doing in that company? Either you'll be hurting yourself or they will be planting evil seed in your system, in your brain, in your mind, confusing you. You need to stay away from such companies that will not benefit you anything. As the Bible encourages us not to be conformed to the things of this world, also encourages us to renew our mind. How do you do that? By listening to the word of God. As the Bible says in Romans 10, 17, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of the Lord. You see, when you, when you are attentive and you have made your you have not made your bed with the enemy. You've made your bed with the things of the Lord. You will triumph. Because in that, even Jesus himself had uh, commanded us to be as perfect as our Father in heaven. So, my encouragement today to us is that in all that you do, in order to remain holy and acceptable to God, Remain in his will. Please be careful with the company you keep. Because the days are evil. Be careful with what you feed your eyes with. Because you might just get carried away and want to try it out. Why did I say this? This video game I saw. And um, it's all about... Um, a doctor you're playing to be a medical doctor and you're gonna be that dissecting people's heart or whatever and when I played the preview of that game just to see what it is the thing I saw was that in the preview that those that have previously played the game they were kids I was shocked that the way that these kids were dissecting this body that this supposed body that were given to them to play as a doctor with they were enjoying it that's the 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 hurting part of it that these kids maybe from their voice you can tell they are not more than seven eight years or nine years old 
dissecting a body and they were seriously enjoying what they were doing. Now tell me, if those kids grow up, or even before they grow up, maybe they have a little brother in, sleeping in the room and the parents ask them to watch over the baby until they are back. What do you think might happen? Wouldn't they think to dissect that child? Wouldn't they think that because of what they have viewed or played in a game? Please, we should be very careful what we ourselves view and what we allow our, our kids to view because they, these are kids. They will just pick anything because their brain is so willing to learn, you know, and to pick up things. We have to be very, very careful, honestly. And be careful with what you feed your ears. It's very important because we are meant to be our brother's keepers. It doesn't matter if our brother is wrong or right. We have to be his keeper or our keeper. Later on, when we meet that brother, we can address the situation. But you don't go around gossiping about them, saying, saying nasty things about them or someone feeding you with lies about them and, and, and you know, you adding to the, the situation. No, I could remember there's a time then my dad was alive and our firstborn was alive. Her name was Christy, by the way. And Christy was in, in the university at that time. And um, so there's this reverend father, sorry, reverend, reverend, actually, if from an Anglican church. He's a very close friend to my dad. And he one day came to our house telling our dad that he saw our sister coming out of a hotel at 12 midnight. That is why I love my dad so much and I always talk about him. He said, okay, what were you doing at the time you saw my daughter? Hmm? What were you doing? He couldn't answer. So what is that telling you? Daddy was not buying gossip. Because why? If really the, the pastor cares about my sister, when he saw her, if he was not guilty as well, when he saw her coming out of that hotel, he would have cautioned her not to take it to her parents. No. If you're taking it to her parents, you're trying to paint uh, their own daughter to them as, uh, as, as, uh, as an irresponsible child. So my dad asked him, you, what were you doing at the time you saw my daughter? So, you see, to tell you that, in my family, we don't tolerate gossip. So if you're trying to bring that gossip to us, you're trying, you're really wasting your time. May he so rest in peace. Anyway, moving on. So, as we have said, because gossiping lies from the pit of hell, does not please God at all. So you have to be careful, just like what I told you now. You see, since my dad scolded that man, he has never come back to report any negative thing, you know. And later on, my dad had to deal with my sister on his own to ask her what she was doing at that time. It turned out that she had to go and meet a lecturer there to submit one of their assignments or so. And the lecturer was not even lodging in the hotel. He came there to have a drink and she brought it to the bar to, because he asked her to. So both their soul rest in peace in Jesus name. Amen. So, um, if you are yet to surrender to God today, he is ever waiting for you to come home. Say this after me. If that is, if you like to surrender your life to Christ, because I'll tell you that the days we live in is really <laughs> not promising, but the good part of it is that Jesus is coming. That's the good part of everything that's happening. So let us pray. Say this after me, if you like to give your life to Christ. Lord Jesus, I come before your throne of grace and I ask for your mercy. I ask that you cleanse me from all my unrighteousness because I know that I am a sinner and I have sinned against you. So Lord, I have come to make amends. I have come to receive you as my Lord and personal Savior because I know that you died on the cross of Calvary for me and you rose after the third day for me, Father, 
for me to have life because I live right now in you because you live so I live so Lord foreverly I will follow you and never turning back in Jesus name amen so folks my word of I will leave you with these thoughts to for you to pound upon as the light is getting lighter darkness is also getting darker I know you want me to explain what I mean you see when, when I say is as the light is getting lighter what I'm trying to tell you is that you see now if you kneel down and ask God from your heart what you want as long as is in his will it happens like this it's not like before and darkness they are getting because everything now when you're dark for for that is like getting lighter now when you call upon the name of he's everly ready willing to answer you and darkness is everly fighting fighting for you not to get that thing so call upon the name of the Lord today and he will answer you. So stay blessed and I'll see you next week. Bye.